Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bosch. The number of clean diesel models in North America will double by 2014. Bosch Clean Diesel. Good. Clean. Fun. Bridgestone. Your journey. Our passion. Dow Automotive Systems. Improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by the 2013 Hyundai Sonata. Learn more at HyundaiSonata.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. It is the 2nd of October. I am John McElroy and here is the news. And here's an amazing fact that most people in the automotive industry are completely unaware of. Did you know that Volkswagen has the highest number of employees in the global automotive industry? And get this, it employs 520,000 workers. That's more than General Motors and Ford and Chrysler put together and with another 82,000 employees thrown in on top of that. In the first half of this year, VW built 200,000 fewer vehicles than General Motors and it needed 310,000 more people to build them. Now most MBAs would tell you that means VW is horrifically inefficient, but so far this year VW has posted $7.7 billion in operating profits versus only $4.6 billion for GM. And this proves VW's corporate structure of autonomous companies under a group umbrella is far more profitable than other automakers' top-down command and control approach. And unless the U.S. gets its financial and political house in order, VW is going to be hiring more Mexicans than Americans. Volkswagen of America's CEO Jonathan Browning tells the Brookings Institute that the group built a new assembly plant for Audi in Mexico because it makes more sense to export vehicles from Mexico than the United States. He warns the U.S. is losing its allure as a place for foreign investment. The media frenzy swirling around the Paris Motor Show is finally starting to die down and the harsh sting of reality is setting in. According to WardsAuto.com, things are going from bad to worse in France. Light vehicle sales plummeted more than 17% last month. Renault and PSA were both down around 17 points, so was Volkswagen. Fiat dropped about 28% and Ford fell by nearly 30. I'm telling you, these are scary numbers and it's only going to get worse. The Germans thought that they might be immune from all of this, but Audi is temporarily suspending production at its Neckarsohn plant in Germany for the first week of October due to slow sales. It makes the A4 sedan, the new A6, and the flagship A8. It's rare when an automaker releases its own spy photo of an upcoming vehicle, but that's just what GM has done. The General is starting to promote its redesigned full-size pickups, which launch next year, to hype the release, a snapshot of a camouflaged next-gen Chevy Silverado has been let loose. From this shot, the truck pretty much looks similar to today's version, but it should receive extensive engineering changes. And yet another sign of the growing tension between China and Japan, the China Car Times reports that Toyota's chairman, Fujio Cho, was denied permission to land his jet in Beijing. Ironically, he was traveling to China to discuss business and political ties because of the anti-Japanese riots and a growing trend of Chinese companies refusing to work with Japanese suppliers. Hey, did you know that Magna Steyr, a subsidiary of Canadian automotive group Magna, builds minis in Austria for BMW? Neither did I, but that might not be the case much longer. According to Reuters, Magna may not build the next generation Mini models because BMW wants to consolidate production at Mini's Oxford plant in England and at the Nedcar plant in the Netherlands, which is operated by Dutch group VDL. Magna currently makes the Countryman and later in the year will start manufacturing the Paceman. Magna Steyr has built cars for BMW since 2003. And coming up next, it's time for You Said It. Look at this. Bridgestone's using natural rubber, researching ways to enhance its quality and performance, and making their factories more environmentally friendly, producing products that save on fuel and emissions, and some that can be reused again. 
and promoting eco-friendly and safety driving campaigns. One team, one planet. Bridgestone. And now it's time for some of your feedback. Jim Taylor saw our report on Peugeot's concept car, the Onyx, with those copper door and fender panels. He says, imagine coming out from a store to find that someone had ripped the body panels off your car for the copper. If they'll cut a 12-inch section out of a supply line to the restroom sink at the local fast food place, they'll do it to a car. And Jim is right, of course. After all, thieves already steal catalytic converters just for the platinum. GM veteran is dismayed by the Greek government subsidizing the construction of a new Formula One track. Formula for disaster, he says. Greek government subsidizes new F1 track, employs some Greeks in its construction. Due to poor economy, very few Greeks can afford to attend races. F1 abandons this venue. Government forecloses on the track. Track closes, but continues to cost government money in maintenance and property taxes. GM veteran, I could not have said it better myself. Pedro Fernandez wants to know, how do these autonomous vehicles react when an animal darts in front of the car? Will it stop? Will it just run it over? What if it's a family of ducklings following the mama duck like I see all the time around here? A cat, a dog, a deer, a midget? I mean, these are decisions only a human can make. Well, actually, Pedro, that's no longer the case. Autonomous cars, which use video cameras and ultrasonic sensors, can see just as well as humans. In fact, they can actually see better because these sensors can see in the dark, in the driving rain or snow, and in heavy fog. Google's autonomous car has already successfully avoided dogs that ran in the road. We got a couple of viewers who are bummed out there will not be an Auto Line After Hours this Thursday night. M360 says, we will miss you and Peter this Thursday night. AAH has become the thing to do on Thursdays. And HTG adds, sadly, I guess I'll be drinking alone this Thursday. Hey, just like George Thorogood, AHTG. But anyway, in the next couple of weeks, we're going to have some great guests on AAH. Next week, we'll have Candace Wheeler, the foremost fuels expert at General Motors. After that, we're going to have John Geraish, the chief engineer for the Ford Fusion, and he'll be bringing one of them into the studio. So just to give you something to look at this Thursday night, we'll be replaying our live webcast from the Paris Auto Show, and that's just in case you hadn't seen it. Anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.